Hello everyone. Ah, this is my third take by the way. Just wanted to say I try to do these all very simple but honestly this is probably going to be the most difficult topic I have to discuss. The reason why I say that is because the one I'm going to talk about today is the path of the human being. Now when we think of the human being we think of this person right here right? But let's break it down to something simple. The human being is another creature in this world that is a product of life. Based on the material and evolution that has happened within this world through time. Through time we have found ways through religious practices and Catholicism and gatherings and togetherness. We'll just call all of that stuff unity and rules. Unity and order. We discovered this and we tried to use it to create, to keep together, to keep us together. But when we started growing and growing and growing, it became a lot harder to keep all of us together. You understand? So we had to find a way to keep as many of us together, even if it meant to just create something for ourselves. When this stuff happens, of course, the name leader starts to sprout, you know? Someone takes charge of these places and everything starts to seem like it's all good and dandy. Some places, you know, they actually turn out to be all right, you know, and some places they don't. But as time were to show us, humanity, as it's grown, has its goods and its bads, you know? And if we're going to look at humanity, at this human being right here, we have to understand that no matter what shade of, or color of skin that you are, you are the of the human race, much like the ape or the is of that race or like our species you know we are the human species you know what I mean but you know just so that we all understand you know some of us do come from different parts of the world so that's why you know much like calling um like a uh, you know the uh the, the the diamondback rattlesnake you know we'll call it diamondback rattlesnake because it's got diamonds on it right to differentiate it from the other Texans Texas snakes that we got here right we'll call it that we differentiate. They're all snakes. We all know that. But that one's a diamondback rattlesnake. And, you know, from all the ones that we have here, we even have little garden snakes, you know? They're all snakes. We all know that. But that one looks different from that one. Much like the one that might look different from the one that comes from Africa. That's an anaconda. And that motherfucker big, you know? You know, he, he looked different. You know, much like the dark-skinned guy who comes from Africa. He looked different. And, you know, that's apparently that's where they originated from. But, you know... Who knows where we all originated from? We don't know where the hell we, the first one of us happened, you know? We don't know that. We just know one thing, you know? We just came to exist, and here we are. And we're just trying to make sense of it. thing is that when you're trying to make sense of it, are you truly making sense of it? Like, by accepting it as a whole? Or are you segregating it to, to, to accept it or, or to, to absorb it partially as you go through life? Because little do you know is when you look at that tree over there, or all that crap there, like, it's entirely one, you know? Entirely one. With all that description, with all of that going, there's so much happening in this world, you know? So much. We're all trying to define ourselves. We're all trying to, to discover what it is to be ourselves. We're no longer knowing what it is to be human. In the last video that I made, I just I, I described how some I've, as some masters I've seen, you know, they wind up sacrificing something to gain, you know, to obtain their knowledge, you know, to get to their enlightenment, to reach their peak, to do their work. And as a human, I've discovered that we don't necessarily need to do that. We don't, because you see, I've been studying for 15 years, and I haven't needed to let go of anything I love, not at all. It has taken me a long time, and I've had to go down a path that was much more difficult, you know, but I'm okay, and anyone can do it too. I'm not saying that everyone has to, it's just that the, this this life that I'm you're seeing me expo like live right here in front of y'all, breathing in front of y'all, like this is just the, the cards that were dealt to me, you know what I mean? Like, you know, God was just like, I'm sorry, bro, but this is just what you're going to have to do. This is what you're going to do, this is the life you got to lead, and uh, you got to learn how to deal your cards. You know, so instead of sitting around, you know, with all, you know, just studying and just feeling like I'm, I want to do something for the world and never doing it, I'm trying right here. You know, this is this is my best example of what I find humanity to be. But if you're just looking at me, 
then you're not really seeing humanity. You're just looking at me. Much like looking at yourself in the mirror, maybe not even liking what you see. That isn't fair to you, right? It isn't fair to me either. It isn't fair to any of us. But that's why we shouldn't be looking at just ourselves. We should be seeing the whole entire picture that we are all one race. And all the situations that happen to all of us individually are all problems of the one race. And they, although we can't all be there to help each other all the time, you know, because like it states in the Christian Bible, God will not do for you that which you can do for yourself. So that means there's some things you got to take care of on your own. But like it also does state for every time that you saw one pair of footprints in the sand, it was because I lifted you or I carried you. And you thought it was your feet. <laughs> Those are little cool little sayings, you know. Much like how, you know, a Native American proverb goes, we don't, we don't inherit, we don't in, inherit the land from our children, we borrow it from them. Or we don't, we don't give, oh, we don't give our land to their, our children, we borrow it from them. Because, like, little do you know, it's like we are the passing time and our children are going to be the ones here. You know, we're borrowing the time that they are now have and we're living here on borrowed time. We are the things that they grow past, like, you know, Master Yoda says in The Return of the Jedi. You know what I mean? And, sorry, mosquitoes, they suck. So, I mean, if you're just looking at me... It isn't fair to yourself that you're just judging humanity based on the words that I'm saying. Go out and listen to, to some masters. Go out and listen to some people that make sense to you. In this grand voyage of the path of the human being, it is one of humility, honor, and... Humility, honor, and... What was the other one? Humility, honor, and humbleness. Humbleness. Because, I mean, if you want to inquire and ask God how all this works, you got to do that with humbleness. you got to do it with humility and some honor. You know what I mean? Like, God will answer you. Everyone's always telling me, like, God doesn't answer to you. Well, of course he doesn't answer to me. You know what I mean? Like, me of all people? Shit. What I'm saying is, you know, if you inquire to God as a friend or you inquire to God in a way that, you know, that, you, that anyone would like to answer, you know what I'm saying? You know, they'll answer you. You know, and you go ask your, if you're a little kid, you know, you go ask your mom, Mommy, can I have a cookie? Please, Mommy. Mommy, can I have a cookie? They give you a cookie because you were cute about it, right? Same thing. Go and inquire into the world something and discover it because honestly this path of humility honor and humbleness will teach you to walk through such grace through such suffrage every day we're waking up having to go do our jobs every day we're waking up having to take care of our children every day we're waking up have to do, deal with some kind of stress anxiety and depression trust me i see it every day i work at good times here in in um in in mccallan texas swing on by by the way you know you know, if there's there's no one around, you can always feel free to speak with me. I'll be there. I speak to everyone as much as I like. Well, not as much as I like. You know, I still got to work too. So try to respect that as well. You know, but you all can swing by. Same guy you see here is the same guy you're going to get there. You know, much like a lot of comedians like uh, like like Fluffy, you know, Gabriel Iglesias, you know, like he says, same guy you get, you see here is the same guy you're going to get out there. Same here, guys. There's no difference. It's just that while you're looking at me and accepting what I'm saying, not all of you, of course, you're only taking in partial of humanity. And the truth is that your humanity is also included. Your form is also also matters because your form also takes a little is a little part in, like just everybody in this in this world to create this form of humanity. Humanity has like it's stated inside the in the Bible has been has been God tried destroying us, you know what I mean? But because we proved that there was a, still a spark of purity and innocence within us, we were able to keep growing. And because we have that, we will always be able to grow from nothing. We will always be able to sprout. We will always find a hope within ourselves. Even if it means that we got to abandon like trillions or trillions, billions, you know what I mean? Of people on this earth so that the rest of us can survive. So that the human race can continue. It's kind of fucked up, right? But there has to be someone to make that choice if it comes by. Does, don't, isn't, doesn't there? There has to be someone, right? One of us has to be able to bear the weight of making that choice if that happens. If somewhere in the future during the age of Aquarius this happens that we have to leave the planet Earth, 
and still so many of us are left alive in our domes or left alive in our incubation periods or left alive on this earth someone has to make that choice guys someone has to make that choice one of us has to make that choice and it has to be the perfect form of humanity that example can offer to make that choice someone is going to have to bear that choice someone is going to have to live that for the rest of their life knowing that they killed that many people this person will either have a serene heart and it'll, it'll weigh heavy on them or this person will just not have will have the capability to just shut it off or this person is just happens to be someone who just doesn't care you know i've noticed in this life or in any form of life three is practically you know the way it is the way of three is everything you know three chances three everything lucky three right but if you can walk through this life not necessarily holding a smile up you know humanity is not just about holding your smile up like some of us feel fucking sad like you know like cry you know what i mean like cry like you know like that's if that's what you feel like doing then do that you know what i mean some of us are gluttons and we're never ever supposed to change because there's someone in the world who does that part for us. You know, some of us are supposed to die with diabetes because that's just what we're supposed to do. Also, but don't fail to understand that, you know, because the law of free will is potent in this place too. You have the choice to change your well-being. Your health is also important and you can take care of that. That's an aspect of humanity that, you know, perspires very like above. That's why we have seven sins in particular because those guys are always in our basic indulgence. Practically the animal part of us, you know. Humanity is the part in which we try to describe, in which we've transcended our animalism. Yet, even did you, even if you don't know, subconsciously and by second nature, we respond to these animal ways. For example, we automat us men, we automatically know when a girl is ovulating because we're horny around them, or they they make us feel like like something up. You know what I mean? And plus, we can smell it. Our, we pick up the hormones and we, we we can pick that up, and we we know, and we're on that ass like we don't even know. Sometimes we're thinking like, hey, we're, we're just trying to take them on a date. But little do you know, you're just trying to smack that. You know what I mean? You're just trying to smash, that's all. <laughs> because, you know, that's our animal thing. You hit it, quit it, go on to your next thing. Just much like the animals. Some animals, some, you know, lions, they stay together as, and, you know, as, a, as a group. You know, elephants do too. But some animals, they just hit it and quit it. <laughs> you know? We, uh, humans, we got that in humans and everywhere. You know? Some animal species, even insect species, let's just consider animals... As all of us, you know what I mean? All of us, not as a, like an insect species or a reptilian species. No, all of us. All of us. All of us animals in this world. Some of us don't actually don't do that. Some animals actually, some of us animals actually like stick to it, you know? That's why as a human, you can see practically all these conceptual ways of being together. And that is what humanity consists of, is this natural unity in which us as a human species are trying to I guess you could say correspond or or react to or ripple to or, or be the echo to, which is like they say opposites attract. And for some people, you know, being this having having someone exactly like you works out too. Some people, you know, just would you know just stay together out of a love hate relationship or just because of kids. You know, it works out so many different ways. And you can see these exact same concepts in the natural animal world. That's why I say let's just see all of this insects, reptiles, amphibians, um, anything else. You know anthropods or whatever snails i don't know you know let's see all of us as animals and you'll see that all these concepts exist and the human species is the one creature that actually well not the probably not the one creature because i haven't seen the entire world that's for sure just you know what i've seen with these two eyes and what i've been able to touch you know and all i can say is when you see all that the human species is a very good conductor of all these very things you know everything 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 you know it's like and in the midst of it all, we're looking at it and we're just like, man, I want to do that too, you know? Some of us are like, I want to fuck like an animal. And some of us are just like, I wish I can eat as much as that guy, you know? We're looking at all those things and we're learning all these things. The human capability is very, 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 very innocent. It's very, very, very fragile, very, very absorbing. We learn every single day. Every single day we're learning something. We just don't even know can be just simply by knowing that we, you know, turns out, you know, certain type of people actually like drinking out of the milk carton before they open up the, before they actually pour the milk into the bowl, you know, or they don't even use a cup. 
know what I mean? But there has to be a break, right? A moment where you can just like sit down and take it all in. You know what I mean? Where you can just like look at it and not let it affect you. See all the bad things that are happening in the world and also know that there's something good, you know? Every day, you know, it's funny. Here's a funny joke or something to laugh about. <laughs> Breaking news today. Stay tuned for 10 o'clock at night, Channel 5 News. A man ate a baby. And everyone's at home like, oh, we have to check that out. We have to see it. We have to wait till 10. So here comes 10 o'clock. They get into the breaking news that lasts for about three to four days. And you're there watching the updates and everything about the man who ate his baby. And all, and all you can think about is just all the... And at the same time, you know, if you're a responsible adult, you got all your bills to pay, your children to take care of. And yourself, your well-being too. And now you're, you're discovering that there's a guy who eats babies out there and he hasn't been caught. Because that, you just found out like on the fourth day, you know, they were too busy, you know. <laughs> they were too busy interviewing him that he accident, he actually, you know, killed someone, ate them, and took off. Funny story, right? But still, you would be more interested in that story rather than hearing that, hey. You, you all, look, everywhere I went, I asked people and all they could think about was the fire that happened at Santa Ana. I told people about the video that I made, and they were just like, you did that on Santa Ana? I'm like, yeah. They're like, I thought that place burned down. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Really? Nah, man. I, where'd you hear that? They're like, oh, the news, they said there was a huge fire, and people were like, oh, it went down. Well, you know what? It didn't. Yeah, I'm here right now. And you know what else happened? About 100 people came and planted some trees. I also went one time over to the McAllen, the McAllen, not the McAllen Convention Center, the McAllen, well, the Mission Refuge. It's another little refuge out on Old Day 3 between Benson and uh, Ware, I believe. And honestly, dudes, like, I went there and there was people planting, planting trees because that place has been closed down for years. You know, years, years. If anyone who knows that place, it's been closed down for years. And we all know that. You know, fucking people trashed it is why. People were going there fucking all over the place and leaving their shit everywhere. And, you know, crashed the fucking party for some of us who just like to go and just sit down and have some peace. But that's humanity for you guys. You know, it takes a little bit of it all to create it. That's humanity. We sprouted from animals. If, if you want to just think simple science, we sprouted through evolution. If you want to think through religious facts, we sprouted from the, from the trial and error of our innocence. And that's why we're here. That's why we know sin as well. You know what I mean? If you want to speak... Uh, Spiritualism, you know, we're all just on a spiritual journey trying to reach our, our, our best selves, you know, and, and wind up in the right place in God's kingdom where we're supposed to be, you know, in the place that we know we're always going to be happy because we built our spirits to be there, you know, to only follow that path. But right now, we're not great spirits. Although we may, some of us may home great spirits, we're human beings and we can't accept, we're not exempt from the fact that we have basic instincts, animalistic instincts, and awareness of ourselves, you know, we, we're conscious of these things, we're very capable, so therefore we should not be overlooking our humanity, and if we're going to be looking, overlooking our humanity, we best, we, be, we best be damn well doing it in the, in the, like, in the so best egotistical way that you're the best example of it, like, seriously, honestly, because, like, I would like to learn from you, <laughs> like, I have yet to meet, like, a pinnacle of egotistical person like i meet the, they have to meet the pinnacle of someone who is like super always happy you know what i mean it takes a little bit of everything to create the world you know maybe those ones that maybe the most holiest person is already dead you know because and, and yet there has to yet to be someone naturally anointed through the through the natural laws of this world to be in sitting in those places in that in that high chair you know i don't know any of these things all i know is one thing the humanity that exists within us this path of a human being is one of humbleness honor and humility because if you can learn these three things, you can master them within thyself. You can apply these these uh, these things or these three words or whatever you want to call them into your life. If you have these just these three things, if you have humbleness, if you have honor, and you got humility, these three things can create a great being. 
And I'm not just talking about like a great being in just a good way, someone who rises up to be an angel. I'm talking about someone who actually, you know, wants to be a murderous person. I condone you doing that. But unfortunately, guys, in this world, it exists and we can't stop it. That is why that is literally why I stopped the last two videos. I cut them off short and I just said, let me start over because this is a part that gets difficult. I don't respect someone who takes life, you know, for fun, like, you know, takes it and just like, you know, you know what I mean? If you're going to do something with it, you're going to torture it. You better do it the right way. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there are great examples of this. People who have done this in our entire history, you know, Triple H Holmes, you know, you know what I mean? Double H Holmes, you know what I mean? Tri you know, that guy made a house dedicated to it. You know what I mean? These people, their lives were co coordinated around this aspect of life and they lived that. Charles Manson, um, I think Rasputin, I don't know about that guy to be honest, I didn't read too much. I think some chicken in Europe or something named Elizabeth Bathory or something like that, she accidentally cut some kid's head, not like with scissors, you know, she was cutting a kid's hair and she just fell in love with the youth, the blood of the youth and now she, she bathed in it and believed that it made her feel young, you know, kept her, her beauty and everything. And she happened to be like the first, like she literally is the killer of killers, you know, the, like the murderers of murderers because... You know, she, no one, no one caught her. <laughs> no one caught her. It is recorded that she probably, you know, killed over 500 people in her time. I don't know if anyone else has ever done that. You know what I mean? Like, of course, you know, we're talking about old school stuff. You know, probably now we can do it with a nuclear bomb. But that's humanity for you. A little piece of everything, right? And I, like I said, I condone anyone who feels the need to go out there and, like, push their, or force their will upon others. Like, for example... I once saw 27 men violate one virgin, and they called this their black mass. When I saw this, I was just like, okay, you all call this power? You call this power. This is power to you. Seriously. This is how you congregate? Okay. I'm sorry to tell you, but if it takes all of y'all to do that, then all of y'all are not meant to be one. It, 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 there are many great people out there like Charles Manson did it himself at a time you know even he started getting people involved and if you notice that's when they all went down you know even Double H Holmes went down for making one simple mistake you know but these are examples of the worst parts of humanity in which they thought were the best and this is where I had to stop because you know what I mean there's a lot of people who are gonna just be like man you're fucked up but here's the thing that's humanity it's a part of it like I told you, you're not, if you're just going to sit here and just take in my form, this is, I'm trying to give the utmost best example in the most basic way of an explanation or definition or connotation of whatever it takes to show you some form of humanity that is basic within us all. Not just from me. I'm trying to give you a broad view that if you're just taking this right here that I'm saying, my whole being and only using that as your perspective, that is not the full picture. Because you have a perspective too. Much like the world itself has a perspective itself. Whereas we all need to like have this form of unity that allows us to take and also give. And with, with this function, I like to think of this function as called the unity function. And the reason why I say this is because... For every serial killer, they did not just kill anything, just anything, you know what I mean? They were fond of something in particular, and they made it a, a, like, a, an inst like a, a certain pattern to do that in particular, you know? They liked, like for some, some serial killers liked certain, certain age of women, you know what I mean? Some serial killers liked certain age of men, you know what I mean? And some serial killers liked to do like ritualistic performances, you understand? Whereas the same concept can be taken, but in a good manner, where good people take these same ways to do good things. There is no escape in the process of how things go. But there is a way for us to view humanity as a whole, but not lose ourselves to that. With these final words, I have to say... Forgive me for bringing up what I have stated. But if no one does, then who will? 
Because honestly, guys, Charles Manson was a human. And if Jesus Christ was real, much like I, I much like I don't know, you know what I mean? I really don't know. Then he was a human being. You know, like it's just not fair to ourselves to divide humanity when we're looking when we're trying to see it. We have to see it that there's a lot of us here, you know, and through the natural animal ways, through evolution, through science, through fiction, through nonfiction, religion, cults, self-explanatory, self-discovery, you know? There's one way to figure it out for yourself to define thyself. You can you can find it and you can describe or or find your own way in all of this. It's not a bad thing to discover God in your own sense, everyone. It really isn't. Some some people really don't even need to think need to care about God. They just need to know that, you know, this that, that this came from something and that's all that matters to them. They're happy with that. There will be no changing their mind because that's what makes them happy, you know? And that's a part of humanity. I'm just trying to give you a better not a better, but a broader spectrum or broader view of what humanity is. Because humanity is a compilation of many things from animals to to theories to to everything, guys. It takes a little bit of everything to make in this to create this world and we're all part of that. Even the ugly. I mean, it's not like I wanted to tell you that, you know, that the on Channel Five News we would rather watch a man we would rather be stay tuned for you know, to get updates on the man who ate his child versus, you know, discovering that Santa Ana is not really gone. It's right behind me, you know what I mean? And that peep there's the you know, it took uh, that a hundred people came out here and planted some trees to help it grow back. And that the same amount of people went to that other, uh, the other refuge as in league with this one out on, you know, out in Mission, I believe, between Ware and Benson, on Old 83, of course, you know. They went out there and they revived it, where at one point it was closed for years, and now they're reviving it again. Now they have Tai Chi days and all kinds of stuff, you know. That's humanity. And if you can walk through all this craziness with such grace, then you will have learned the most important lesson. How to uphold one's essence in the next realm. Because if you want superpowers, I mean, unfortunately, someone's gonna just going to kick your ass if you're just fucking everything up, right? And you're just going to come right back here. Sorry to say. I won't allow you that. I won't allow you to fuck up my home. Peace, y'all.